So Greg Sankey was up first Monday at SEC Media Days, and as you might expect, I and others asked him about realignment and the landscape. And he kept going back to one line that made very clear the SEC is not out on expansion. If they were actively seeking to add Florida State and Clemson, if that were their number one desire, I don't know that we would get a lot of direct public comments from the commissioner about their mindset being, yeah, we want to add these schools, we're waiting for them to get out, because that tips your hand, and then if you don't wind up getting them for some reason, then the league perceptionally ends up looking like they lost somehow, even though it's the SEC, (laughs) best conference in America. So the line that he kept going back to is, we are 16 teams strong. We are 16 today. We are 16 tomorrow. That was his quote. He had other quotes, like, I'm not a recruiter. I'm focused on the 16 teams. Now, these are not answers that make you think, oh, wow, they're going to go out. They're going to aggressively pursue Florida State. They're going to lock up the state of Florida and and South Carolina. They're going to get Clemson. They're going to do. It's also decisively not a refute of the notion that they could expand. He did not say, we are not going to expand. He did not say, we will never go beyond 16 teams. He did not say, we have no interest in doing any of that. He said a a matter of fact statement, essentially. It was commissioner speak. It was coach speak, which leaves the door open to swing both ways. They could add Florida State and Clemson. They could not add Florida State and Clemson. And he wouldn't look like he has to go back on his statement or that he was double talking or speaking out of the side of his mouth or anything of the sort. We are 16 teams strong. We are 16 today. We are 16 tomorrow. That was an interesting word. That was an interesting word. What does that mean to you? I was recently reading... Stephen Breyer's book, The Retired Supreme Court Justice. I I read all sorts of nonfiction political books and and whatnot. And it was an interesting read. And, you know, the the book is called Reading the Constitution. And he talks a lot about, you know, the law, which is a career path I once upon a time considered, part of the reason I was interested in reading the book, and constitutional interpretation. And one thing that he he alludes to in, in the book, Retired Justice Breyer, is that he looks at what what a statute or what a law, not just what it says, but what is in what it is intended to do at the time of its enactment. That guides his judicial philosophy or guided his judicial philosophy when he made rulings over the course of, uh, of his career going all the way up to the Supreme Court. And so I thought about the word tomorrow in the context of that book, because if you take the literal interpretation, it would be Well, that means we have 16 teams today, Monday, January 15th. We're going to have 16 teams tomorrow, Tuesday, January 16th. That's what the literal interpretation of his words mean. But is that what his actual meaning is? This is not Greg Sankey's first rodeo. This is not the first time he's navigated these sorts of waters. I thought he spoke very well about the state of college athletics and navigating the the issues. I think he does an excellent job of projecting how sincere he is in wanting to make this the best situation for, for, for fans, for community, for student athletes, for everybody like that. And the word tomorrow didn't appear to just mean the word tomorrow, but it could, and it is open ended. And he went back to it several times We are focused on our 16 teams. That's the same sort of language that Tony Petiti used before they added Oregon and Washington to the Big Ten. I don't recall the exact quote off off the top of my head, but he said, we are focused on these members here, which is essentially the the sort of non-answer that provides cover to both allow you to talk about expansion with your presidents and if an opportunity comes about that you feel is beneficial to your conference to then act on said move and also allows you to not make any move whatsoever because you feel that your conference is in a good enough place. You don't want to potentially dilute uh, any revenue to your existing members and you don't you don't want to go forward with, with making any of those sorts of move. And the comments that, that these commissioners give in these instances often allow that door to swing both ways.
Now, Brett Yormark has had some very public and, and pointed and open remarks about, yeah, we are going, we are being aggressive, we are being shot right. Oh, this is just over the last couple of years generally. He's been more specific with it because I think his conference has needed that sort of attitude. They've had to be on the prowl. They've had to be aggressive. Greg Sankey spoke about the regionality of uh, of college sports in the landscape, and I asked him if he could ever see a world in which they needed to expand beyond their footprint because he talked about the value of still being called the SEC and that's still meaning something because they haven't extended their geographic footprint or gone outside of what the southeastern part of the United States is by adding Texas and Oklahoma. They've just really strengthened their foothold in that part of it. And he gave, you know, again, kind of a non-answer to to my question about, you know, I'm not going to speculate about what it is, but I feel like this is something we you know, are, are, are very proud of, but, you know, we, we feel like we're in a strong position right now, and, and they are. They are. I don't think that, I, I think it is just commissioner speak at some level, but I don't think it's just commissioner speak, because he can actually mean that speaking as the commissioner of the SEC, because if, if he's, you know, committed to keeping it a regional conference, they can do that. He said, you know, uh, another one of his quotes was, we can stay at 16 teams for a long, long time. That's true because of the quality of programs and the caliber of programs that they do have in the SEC right now. They can stay there for a long, long time. But again, notice that it's not specific, which is why my takeaway was he's not shutting the idea down. He's just not aggressively pursuing it. He was very passive in the way he spoke about Florida State and Clemson. Yeah, no, we pay attention, but I'm not, you know, all in the weed. I'm not diving deep into all this sort of stuff. That might actually be the case. They definitely have an eye on it. If they feel like they could get, maybe it comes down to price and what the cost is to add Florida State and Clemson, if at all. But if they feel like it's the right move for the league, the SEC is not completely shut down for business. They might be focused on the 16 teams now until Florida State and Clemson come along. And maybe they decide, ah, yeah, no, we'd actually like to go get them. And if the SEC and the Big 12 are both bidding for, or and the Big 10, frankly, if they're all bidding for Florida State and Clemson, yeah, the SEC is probably going to win that probably going to win. The Big 12 only winds up with them if they are so dead set on leaving the ACC that they would raise hundreds of millions of dollars somehow to pay the exit fee to leave the conference and then they decide, yeah, we just don't want to be in this league so badly. We'll go to a league that that doesn't have as much revenue and is, you know, really on similar footing and isn't a massive upgrade uh, and whatnot compared to the conference that that we're in right now. Maybe they want to stick it to the ACC that badly. Maybe it's a leverage play to get the ACC to renegotiate their their contract with ESPN or try to get ESPN to figure out how they can get more money, more revenue into the conference because that deal was signed so long ago, it'd probably be a little bit uh, different valuation-wise if it were put on the open market right here, right now. The ACC's media rights, I mean. So last thing that Greg Sankey said that uh, I, I wanted to address was he, he emphasized the importance of rivalries. And I touched on this a little bit on yesterday's show in the SEC ACC slate. Put me in the camp of I love rivalries and they are what separate college football from the NFL. I'm a Seattle Seahawks fan. Our big rival is the 49ers. I don't feel one tenth or even a fiftieth of the rivalry juice between the Seahawks and 49ers that I feel watching college rivalries that I don't even have an affiliation with. When I watch the Iron Bowl or Georgia, Florida, or just, like just keep going down the list. Oklahoma, Texas, which is now an SEC game. I, I really appreciate that Greg Sankey is emphasizing the importance of rivalries, that they've brought back Texas and Texas A&M. That's going to be a fantastic matchup. Those two fa- fan bases loathe one another. It's great. It's high-quality entertainment. And leaning into that, I think, is a really, really strong play for, for, for the SEC and any college football conference. You should always lean in to your big rivalry games. Hype them up. Highlight them. Showcase them. Put them on primetime. Make them big-time matchups. That's what people are looking for. Those are the sorts of days that you don't just plan entire weeks around. You plan entire months around to make sure that you're there for the entire week. You know, tailgating days in advance with uh, your friends maybe and extending it to, you know, being, making it into a golf trip or whatever. Like, what, like the, those are the games that we're always looking for. And I love the emphasis the SEC is placing. So with regards to the schedule, 
I am fully in support of having two protected rivalries for every SEC team. I think that's a great idea because there are two teams that I can look at for a number of schools and say, yeah, you should play them every year in the SEC. Alabama, for instance, should play Auburn every year, of course, and should play Georgia every year. When you look at what those two programs have meant to the SEC in college football in the last 10 years or so, yeah, when the new schedules start coming out, like Oklahoma and Texas are going to play every year. Are you telling me that's the only team you'd like to see Texas play every year? Like either Georgia or Alabama. If you're going to have these realigned conferences, you might as well lean into let's have the big games. Let's ensure that these big games are going to take place every year. Let's start to foment a rivalry between Texas and insert, you know, X, Y, and Z SEC school. That should probably be Texas's other protected rival is Texas A&M. Like regionality, I'm here for it. Texas should play Texas A&M and Oklahoma every year. Oklahoma should play Texas and, you know, there isn't an as obvious one there for Oklahoma to play every year necessarily. Maybe Oklahoma fans can let me know. But uh, I, I think the leaning into rivalries is great. I think it is just a fantastic element of college football. I am here for it. And I think two protected rivalries is the right number.